um, we are going to walk through a body sensing activity. We're going to talk about why self-care is important, even though you probably know it's important, but we'll hit on some facts about it and some research behind it. Um, personal self-care versus self-care at school. So looking at what you do for yourself outside of school and what you can do for yourself inside of school and inside or inside your, your roles. And then we'll, we'll look at a self-care inventory and core values activity, and then we'll wrap up. I do want to let you know that you want to stay the duration with us tonight because we have at the end, we'll be sharing a link to complete a survey and completing that survey for us allows us to send you your certificate of attendance for continuing education credits and also the PowerPoint with all the wonderful activities that you learned tonight. So I'm going to start you off with a body sensing activity. This is a multi-sensory technique to find and unravel your emotion in your body. Um, it e easily refocuses your concentration in inward, locates a, a source of a event, memory, feeling via physical sensations and energetic patterns in the body, gives form, form to what you're seeing or invisible things or feelings and thoughts. And this is from the RIM Institute and something that um, several of us with GSN are trained in and has, has helped us in our work with others, but also some self-care for ourselves. So I would like, we're gonna do a quick one. It can be longer, but I'm just going to take a few minutes to walk you through a quick activity. So I want you to get comfy in your seats if you want to sit straight up or if you want to relax, it's up to you. And then I invite you with your eyes open or closed. So open or look, or looking down away from the screen if you keep your eyes open, whatever you're comfortable with, open or closed. I want you to get relaxed and comfy in your chair. Just make sure that you're in a space where you can sit comfortably. And now I'd like you to focus on your body and feel if you have pain anywhere in your body. Now, once you've located where that pain is, picture that location in your body. Focus in on that pain. How does it feel? Feel. Is it sharp? Maybe it's dull or pulsing, pounding, just kind of there. What is that? What does it feel like? Now with that pain, what is it doing? What does that movement look like? Maybe it's swirling. Maybe it's like a wave, daggers poking in and out. What does your mind see that pain as? And is there a color to that pain? What color? Maybe you see swirling colors. Is it red and pulsing? What does, what does that look like for you in color? Now focusing in that, on that pain with how it's moving and the color and the energy that it's providing. Has it moved at all? Has it changed in any way? Maybe you have it located somewhere else in your body now. Just focus in. Let's keep looking at that pain and noticing its color, the sensation, the movement. And when you're ready, take a deep breath in and out. And if you need to do a couple more, you can. 
And whenever you're ready, feel free to open your eyes. Hey, welcome back to me and CJ. So in the chat box, we'd love for you to share what you, anything you noticed or anything you felt while we did that activity. Did you change, did you change from before to after? Maybe you were stressed and now you're less stressed or maybe that stressed you more. In general, what did you, what did you get from that activity? Guinevere felt more calm. As people are writing, I'll share, I was having lower back pain in my lower left. Um, and I kept visualizing this like clear white cube, just like moving around like in osmosis, like almost in water. And every time it would move a certain way, I'd get a little bit more pinch. But as you like kept talking and as I was drawing more aware of it, it's like slowed down. So it was like, oh, you know, when you just ignore it and you push your pains and you push your little twerks aside, but when you take the time to just calm down and focus, you know, maybe you can start clear, like clearing out why, why is there pain? What do I need to do about it? And I started like prioritizing why maybe I felt that way. So it was kind of cool. And I like really could notice it slowing down and not hurting as much. Oh, good. I see that. Um, I thank you for sharing. Yeah. And um, it is amazing how your pain, when you focus in on it, has an energy and can really shift and move and you can flow through other thoughts with that. So um, Katie said she felt the pain subside slightly. Cassandra, it felt like the pain might have decreased after a while. Gloria felt more relaxed, swelling in the inner hands went down. Liz was able to assign a color and even texture to the pain. In thinking about it, she felt it move up and down, up her back and deep breathing helped in pushing it up and almost out. So you can see this is a very quick activity to do for yourselves. Um, I can do it for me when I'm falling asleep at night. And usually before I even get through, where is it moving to, I'm asleep. So it's a great way to unwind and it doesn't take much time at all. Even if you just have a one minute to do this, you can, you can go ahead and, and give that self, give that to yourself. And even, and, or if you're walking and you feel pain or sharp pain, you can just stop and focus in on that pain and let it become part of you and move it out. I'll add that, you know, when we're able to do that, I think we find ourselves a little bit more concentrated on breath and that too can really centralize some issues for us and, and be able to kind of push some stress and some control into our pain. Um, so that's another really important thing is just really focusing on that breath and that calmness. So let's move, thank you, CJ. Um, this is you? No, yeah. yep, go ahead. Yeah, um, okay, so we're gonna talk about why self-care is important. Um, I, you know, when we were preparing for this, we were kind of like, you know, I, we felt like all teachers and really anybody that's been dealing in the education world for the last two years has been hounded with, make sure you take care of yourself, make sure self care. And, you know, it's like, great, but it is what it is right now. And it's really, really hard. And it's really hard to fit in. And you're just constantly faced with, you know, realities that are sometimes out of your control. And so um, instead of just hounding you with things of, you know, make sure you get out and walk and make sure you drink water and, and eat well. And um, we're just gonna try to do things like this, um, tools that you can use in the moment to help manage stress. Um, things that can help you prioritize what is really important in them and what is worth your energy and maybe what is worth putting to side and, and dealing with later or maybe not valuing it so high. Um, so I guess if anybody's really brave and could share with us why they think self-care is important or even in the chat, that would be great. Um, so again, like I said, it can be the self-care that I was talking about or it can be tools that you've used that you have noticed have helped. Okay, 
Hi, this is Aleda. I'm calling from San Antonio. And when I uh, received this invitation, I thought, oh, great, this is what I need. Because I know that, um, like all of you all, um, we need to be in our schools because our students need us. But the level of stress for the past 20 something months during work and then outside of work when we're dealing with our own families and the challenges that presents is just beyond anything that I've ever imagined. In fact, I'm now seeing a cardiologist because I have palpitations that don't go away. I mean, and yes, I'm in my 40s and there might be other stuff going on, but I'm like, if I'm not good, then I'm not a good mom. I'm not a good employee. I'm not a, you know, I'm not good for anyone. So I have to force myself to be more aware of like, nope, you got to put that away. Nope, you got to have some quiet time and eat well and whatever it is. Otherwise, I'm going to end up in bed and not be good for myself, my family, or my work. Well, Lita, thank you so much for sharing. That's exactly right. And we're going to touch on that, what we call compassion fatigue, right? Especially in this career, um, you all go into this because you have immense compassion for educating and being part of kids' lives and, and making them better. And we're going to talk about that too. Gosh, thank you so much for sharing. Um, lots of good stuff in the chat too. Um, yeah, exactly, Liz. It's like putting the ox oxygen mask on yourself before others. First yeah. rule of our flight attendants. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Okay, Donna, I think we'll move on. Okay. Um, so it was interesting. We typed in when we were kind of researching and getting some concepts and some you know, mapping out how we wanted to present this. We typed in teacher stress COVID to 2021. No, not without, the... co not without, we did oh. it without COVID. We just had oh, sorry. teacher stress teacher 2021. Stress. Without COVID. And, sorry, that's right. And this is what came up. And it was just obvious that COVID has caused so much stress. And these were, you know, top articles that obviously have been shuffled around. And so it's, it's obvious to us. It's of no no um, shock that that's true and that we are dealing with um, the pandemic burnout and we're we're dealing with stress and we're dealing with new things in our career that was not ever you know um, asked of us before or it wasn't ever added to the plate and so the career has really shifted I would say and we aren't really sure of the outcome and we aren't really sure of how it's going to you know proceed so how can we you know, control what we can control and move forward um, in a positive way. Next. Um, so according to the Nationally Representative Survey by um, Ed Week Research Center, it was conducted this July, um, they found that 60% of teachers say they experience job-related stress um, frequently or always. Um, just 9% say they never or rarely do. And then 41% say they feel they're less effective at their job when they're stressed, which we can all relate. Um, it is essential that we extend compassion to ourselves and our students and our colleagues by addressing the elephant in the room of teacher mental health and the importance of self-care. Um, and our students, like you guys have already just said, they deserve mindful teachers and present teachers. Um, so again, there's so much that is uncontrollable. Today, I hope that you walk away with maybe a couple tools to help you maybe be more mindful, be more present in the moment and kind of drop the stress in the minute, in the moment. And then um, compassion fatigue, a state experienced by people in distress, an extreme state of tension and preoccupation with the suffering of those being helped to the degree that, is cre that it creates a secondary traumatic state of stress for the helper. So exactly what um, Aldina explained was that, you know, if I'm not taking care of myself, you know, that, that I care so much and I wanna be here so bad and that I'm just, I'm fatigued, I can't continue on. And so I, I don't know about you guys, but that kind of makes me feel better sometimes because it really does just show you that it's because you care. You know, it's not because you're not doing a good job. It's not because you don't care. It, it's because you care so much. Um, so it is true and, and have grace with yourself and, and allow yourself to accept that 
and that um, living in that moment in, in fatigue is truly because you're here for the right reasons. And with that, we want to talk about self-care. We know that neglecting self-care can cause burnout and exhaustion, stress, depression, anxiety, lost sense of self, weakened immune system, like you shared with your heart, and irritability and frustration. The benefits, if we're able to do this for ourselves, include healthier mind, body, and soul, stronger immune system, increased energy, feeling positive and calm, increased productivity, better sleep, increased focus and attention. And I can tell all of you right now, I have been neglecting my own personal self-care for several weeks now because of the work that is on me and then situations happening. My husband just had surgery last week. Um, kids are sick, all of that. And so this is helping me with all of you tonight to remember that we all need to take care of ourselves at all times. And that compassion fatigue is a true thing. It's not just another buzzword. It really is something that we are experiencing in our world and those around us. So we wanna do a quick activity with you this is a self-care inventory and Ellen is going to place a link in the chat box. We would like you to open up that link and I'm gonna give you about five minutes. Well, it might take a little bit longer. So I'll give you about eight minutes to complete the inventory. Just go with your first instinct for each of these. You can write down your number for each of the components and you don't have to overanalyze overthink them just write just mark what you think is you right now in this moment no one else is going to see this this is for your personal awareness so click on that link and just write down maybe on a piece of paper on your phone each section and then the numbers that you rate for each of those areas under that section. And I'll click on this so that you can see it as well in case you wanna stick with us. You can also um, make a copy under file, make a copy and then you'll have your own. So if you do wanna work within your own document. Thank you, CJ. Yeah. And you can see the rating is five is frequently, four occasionally, three rarely, two never, and one, it never occurred to me. And the category is physical self-care, psychological self-care. Oh, where, oh, and sorry, I think it's still loading. Oh, you need to keep scrolling down for the emotional self-care spiritual self-care, workplace or professional self-care. Oh. So there are five different areas that you're doing this in. Oh man, I was scoring really high until I got to make time away from telephones.
Geraldine, are you asking for us to email you the link? Or can you see, can you get it on the chat? I added it to the chat. Okay, thank you, you can get it. Something interesting that I just realized is I did this with a group about a month ago. And I want to, at that time, my workplace or professional self care was one of my highest. And in rating myself today, it's actually probably my lowest area. So that's a sign now looking at this a month later that things have shifted and I may need to do some work around doing uh, uh, going back to this, this rubric and being able to do some work around these areas to bring back that piece and make it, make it even off a little bit. So does anyone need additional time? All right. Oops, sorry, just sec. Okay, so now we are going to ask you in the chat box to add what does self-care look like in your personal life? What do you notice about your self-care in your personal life? CJ, what does it look like for you? Um, I do pretty good. I've been working at this stuff for a long time. So I've gotten, I've gotten pretty good at it, but I would have to say I have a mom of two young kids, two and four, and I probably don't get enough alone time, <laughs> <laughs> which, you know, I saw and I was like, oh yeah, that, and that is something that I, as a, as me personally, I, I do like to be alone. Um, and usually I do that when I work out. So, um, yeah, that's when I do get it. But I would like more time to just like read um, by myself. So that was probably the one thing. Other than that, I, um, I've i done really good in the physical self-care and the psycholog psychological. But like you said, um, I was surprised in the workplace professional. That's probably where I'm, I'm a little bit more of the weak, weakest. Which I'm, that. <laughs> yeah, got to keep working on it. And I see Mary allow Ann for breaks during the work day. Yes. Yeah, I probably don't do that. <laughs> yep. And I see Marianne st said journaling, spending time in nature, Joanne trying not to bring work home mentally. That's tough. Leave work at work and being able to vent to someone. Yeah, that venting can help. And Marianne, the other day I said, all I want to do is be on top of a mountain hunting right now, if I could be anywhere in the world. And so I get that nature piece. Geraldine, um, re-watching movies, arts and crafts. Liz, almost daily 10-minute meditation. So we all learn from each other. These are some ideas that I haven't heard 
be a few these are things that I haven't heard before so I love hearing these and learning from each other and that's another important point of self-care is just taking a moment to talk to each other what do you do for self-care and you might get a new idea or have a partner to do it together and hold each other accountable Kevin you really don't know well maybe you'll generate some ideas from this next activity so we are going to put you into breakout rooms. And while you're in the, your breakout rooms, we want to you to talk about these three questions. What does self-care look like for you at school as a teacher? What self-care practices are already in place at your school? And what self-care practices would you like to see in place? Ellen is going to add a link to a Padlet. Now, we'd like you to open that Padlet up. And when you're in your breakout rooms, complete that Padlet based upon these three areas. Any questions about this activity? Feel free to unmute. Okay, we will give you about 10 minutes to meet together and fill out the Padlet. Um, and again, you'll get to see what it looks like at the end. So we'll see you back here at 5.03. And let me, so Ellen, you go ahead and click join when it pops up. Okay, just waiting for everyone to come back from Zoom land. All right, well, does anyone want to share out? Here's this great Padlet. We'll talk about it, but does anybody want to share out what you talked about or something you learned in your breakout room? So something that we were interested to hear is what practice would you like to see in place? And I see catnap, wouldn't it be cool to have someone on staff that you could reach out to when you needed to, to take a mental break, even if it were in the middle of class, don't abuse it, but even just to go to the bathroom and splash water on your face. Yep, exercise activity opportunities and healthy food, built in time for mindfulness practices, professional development differentiated just like the kids have opportunities, increased wellness for teachers. Um, at the moment, someone's school is prioritizing the F and S's as well as their students' well being. Um, book study on a book that isn't education focused, wellness plan in place, life coaching, more wellness centers, comfy places to sit, peer coaching in classroom, yoga classes, anonymous gratitude nominations for coworkers, then they get a prize for having many nominations. What great ideas. And maybe those are takeaways from tonight that you could present to your administration or even do an activity like this with your staff to get input as to how they would like to see self-care in place in the workplace. Thank you all. Um, anybody have anything else that they wanna add? I think it would be really great if um, leadership constantly modeled self-care as well, because it's such permission giving to the rest of the team to do the same. 
Yeah, that is, that is true. Mm -hmm. And even leadership setting up opportunities to do that with their staff. Mm -hmm. Yep. Great point. Thank you, Lindsay. Anyone else? Well, and hopefully you take some time to reflect on your own self-care rubric. If we had more time tonight, I would have had you share out with each other what your, who was high in, in areas and what was lowest. So like for psychological self-care, who came out low? And then those who were high, sharing out ideas for why they were high in that area and what they do to stay high in that area. So that's another way that you can utilize with this with your students or each other or for yourself and even at home with your families. And Ramal, I see weekly check-ins with your team. Yes. So often we get so siloed in our work and it ends up feeling like we're on an island on our own. Great point. Okay, great. So we are going to round this presentation out with one more skill that you can take away um, and even maybe practice with your students. Um, I think it's just as valuable for them as it is for you um, and maybe share even with your coworkers. Um, but I, um, I'd like, I'd love to discuss what people consider core values um, but in your own mind, maybe um, start thinking about what you consider core value um, and we're going to talk about how maybe um, in the moment coming up with your your base core values can really help you evaluate and and decide what is worth your stress and what isn't and, and help you make decisions in the moment and um, really add flavor to your life that is in a positive way. Um, core values are principles or beliefs that a person views um, as being the central importance to them. Um, and everyone has different core values. So you could grow up in the same household um, and still come away with different core values because they're, they're based on your experiences and, your, and who you are in life and what you've kind of lived through. Um, it, it, research shows that when people live with their values, they tend to experience a greater level of emotional fulfillment than if they go against their core values in the things that they do. Um, core values can be thought, thought of as almost um, a code of conduct that we have developed for ourselves. Um, that helps us choose how we act and react in a way that is congruent with the things that are valued the most. So again, really helping to hone in on those core values will help us react in a more positive way to stress. Um, next slide, Donna. Um, so how could core values help alleviate your day, um, your day to day stress? Um, so core values are really um, best used alongside with goal setting techniques. And I think goal setting is a whole nother area that teachers can start taking on um, to help really focus on their day to day needs and start alleviating the things that they can maybe come back to, or it really isn't that important right now. Um, and, and let go of some things that, that they are capable of doing. Um, if a um, goal connects to none, if, you're, if your goal doesn't really connect to your core value, um, then it may not be um, as strong as it could be, or it may not be as important. And maybe you need to look at a different focus. Um, and it also can be found that core values can really help um, change things like addiction and anger and anxiety um, grief, loss, um, confidence, eating, uh, fears, phobias, all sorts of kind of things. So this is the quick practice. Um, if you have a piece of paper or on your phone or whatever you would like, we're going to throw up a list of um, core values. You can find lots of lists of core values. I chose a shorter one today because we're just going to give you a quick example of how to narrow this down. Um, there's also cards. That's my favorite way to do this activity, um, to physically do it. And um, Donna will make sure to make it as big as possible. But um, what I want you to do is take the next uh, three to four minutes to um, whatever re words resonate to you. And let's be specific. You can look at this in a private or, a, or professional life, but let's choose professional today. So in your current professional life, 
um, out of these words, write down what resonates to you as important or as in um, fulfilling in your career. Um, and just write those words down at least a minimum of 10 if we can. Um, and after that, we'll kind of start narrowing it down. So if everybody can see the sheet, go ahead and start writing what words resonate to you most in your professional career. It really is important to not have a gut or have a gut response. Just really don't overthink it. What makes you feel good when you read the word and you think about your career? We can keep going, CJ. It looks like everyone's done. Okay, great. Um, so in the next minute or so, take those, those that list of words, whether it's a minimum of 10 or, or maybe more, and rank them from highest to maybe the 10th. Um, put 10 in highest to, I hate to say least, because they're all really important and they all are valued to you. Um, but as far as your career, rank those from one to 10. Again, gut, gut feeling. Thank you for those that are sharing in the chat. I love seeing the difference. About 30 more seconds. And when you've done that, scratch out the bottom five. Those top five are gonna be your core values. Um, now we did this really, really quick and um, I'd like to see people that have a little bit more time. Um, and if you have a different variation, you can rank these in high, medium, and low categories. Um, and it's interesting to even reevaluate your low because a lot of times the more you do this, they'll switch and your low maybe will become your high and vice versa. Um, so and it's- And if you wanna really share in the, sorry, if you will share in the chat what your top five were. Oh yeah, that'd be great. That way we can see, because I see um, Lucy responsibility and understanding. Joanne resilience was her number one. Darren loyalty, respect, trustworthiness. Mary well-being, creativity, passion, playfulness, and mindfulness. Those are also good. And when you are really dealing with your day-to-day -day stresses, and you find that something is stressing you out, um, does it align with your core values, and is it worth your time. 
Um, I think if you align your work with your core values, you'll start finding that fulfillment and you'll start um, being able to really focus on what is important and what the kids are going to get out of your work and what is most important to them and what is just not, not worth your time. Um, and something else to know is everybody is different. You can see just from our chat box, everybody's core values are different and that's okay. And that's great because then you can give to others at, through your gifts and your core values while at the same time they're giving. And as long as your core values are taken care of and you're able to focus on those, you can bridge others' core values into yours. Sorry, CJ. Yes. No, Donna, that was such a good point and exactly true. Um, you can get these cards on Amazon or you can make your own if you have the capacity to do so. There's also tons of core value sheets out there you can do with your students. Um, the last thing I think I'll share is that you know, these core values can really help in, in making decisions, day-to-day um, -day decisions, using core values um, for habit change, using core values for developing healthy thoughts, or using core values to assess secondary gains and resistance to change. So um, yeah, another quick tool to use in your day-to-day -to, -day to start relieving yourself of some unnecessary stress. Um, I know we're getting down to the end, so I want to just kind of quickly wrap it up. I am happy to stay on if anybody has any questions also, but we want to make sure um, that one, we're going to put in a, um, a feedback survey at, into the chat. If you please can complete this feedback survey, we will make sure that that certificate gets sent to you. Um, and um, that will also help us continue to improve. Um, what we do monthly. And then the only thing I want to leave you with is if you can make yourself a commitment um, to um, one self-care activity to complete by Sunday. Um, I know a lot of you are probably, this is the last week of school. So a great opportunity for you to find one self-care activity that you can do that was outside of your normal habit um, to complete by the end of the school week. And we'd like you to add this to the chat because when you think it and write it, it becomes more solid and encourage you to share your one commitment with a colleague or a friend or family member and ask them to hold you accountable by checking in with you on Sunday to see if you did this. Anybody have any questions for Don and I? And CJ did put the link to the survey. So once you've added your personal commitment, I see Car is going for a walk at the park. I'm going to try to bake with my friends and children. Christy commit to talking, taking her dogs on a nice walk, long walk. Um, Geraldine exercise on her ellipt elliptical. CJ ride your horse three times this week. That's a great one. Happen. Mary mm -hmm. keep up morning routine. Joanne commit to spend time with your family, party at, at the DJ in Denver and see Meow Wolf. Oh, that's so Oh cool. yeah, I love that. Rosalind is gonna take cookies. a long drive. Jamie, baking Christmas cookies with her kids. Rommel, make and create art. So these, just you guys sharing out might've gotten some more ideas. Katie, baking desserts. Cassandra, exercise at least five days a week. Another lofty goal, go. Um, Liz, finish a book. So maybe you got some ideas from others' commitments as well that you could add to your list for next week. Um, and again, CJ, can you put the survey again in the chat? Yep. Take time to complete that survey so we have your email and can send you the PowerPoint, the recording, and your certificate. And Medina, follow up the with the sleeping schedule. Yep, follow your sleeping schedule. So important. I'm lacking in that. Yeah. So CJ and I are going to hang out with you guys for a little bit. If you have any questions, feel free to add them to the chat or just unmute yourself, and we're here to support you. And we do thank you for joining us tonight. Happy holidays, everyone. Yes.
Hunter, we got to get like our background music game. I know <laughs> we do. Oh, and also if you need to contact us, our email addresses are here. They're also, they'll also be in the PowerPoint. Um, we can work with your schools to bring self-care to you too. We can obtain grant funding for social emotional learning, which includes self 